Welcome back to the H&Z show. Before we went on uh, for Azan, uh, this week's topic is marriage and we were, get, we were getting views from Sayyid Murtaza about marriage and different things. And let me remind the Hadith of the week again to you. You'll see it on your screen in just a moment. The uh, Hadith of the week is by Prophet Sallallahu where he has said, there is no institution in Islam more beloved and dearer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than marriage. So all the viewers out there, write this Hadith down and we'll talk about more. Uh, about the hadith, we'll also uh, give you the quiz question shortly. We'll open the lines again and you can uh, ring in and give us your answer to the quiz and win the prize. But before we do that, let's get back to what Sayyid Musa was saying. So you were saying the different duties are of a man towards his wife. Mm -hmm. Well, the different duties towards, you know, the female partner. Um, there's numerous, you know, it'll take more than an hour or 40 mm -hmm. minutes to discuss it. But some of those are, you know, just generally helping around the house. You know, I know many men, we say that, oh, you know, we come back from work and we're tired and it's difficult for us. But you know, you should you should still help your wife. You know, end of the day, she's been working as well. She's not been lazing around, hopefully watching, you know, television all day. You know, yeah. here's hoping, right? With different uh, social <laughs> dramas. That there they you go, do. Facebook, Twitter, and all that yes. sort of stuff. You know, hopefully they won't be sitting around all day. And if they have, you'll see, you know, the evidence when you go into the house. And, and I think room, life you know? nowadays is quite different anyway because yeah. uh, uh, in, in, in Western society, both males and females are always working. Mm. And how do you feel or how do, what do you think the both uh, husband and wife should manage? How do you think is the best way well, to manage? Compromise, isn't it? You know, in any relationship, if you want a successful relationship within your life, you have to compromise. I think that's the key word for today, compromise. Yeah. I so, you know, with the Hadith, we should put next to the, next to the Hadith, compromise. Compromise, okay. Yeah, so, you know, that's what marriage is. You know, effectively, marriage is that. It's compromise because, you know, when you're both at work and you come back home, you're both tired, you know, you have to help each other. One person cooks the food, the other one does the dishes. One person does the dishes, the other one cooks the food, you know. That's just how it has to be. And if you don't have that, then that's why relationships break up. That's why problems happen. And, you know, it doesn't, that's why... <laughs> marriage is not fruitful and not successful. I agree. I mean, even, even like uh, when you look at different, different, um, uh, in different societies, especially South Asian culture, where, or even Pakistani culture, not to, not to, gen you know, not to stereotype anyone, but it's always females, it's always the, it's always the ladies that s seem to be doing all the work. And uh, I know quite a few families where ladies are working, mm -hmm. and they work in women, but they come back when they come home, they have to do all the work. Where the and males are, even though male is the breadwinner, mm -hmm. they still try not to help as much as you know they should so i think uh, as com coming back to what you said like compromise helping them helping each other and you know supporting i think supporting is also quite good for both of them. now i've realized you know since i've been you know speaking and obviously talking to a number of people you realize within within the lifetime especially with women they get a lot of depression you know you can imagine you know they go to work they help with the family you know, they do the cooking and the cleaning, then they have to look after the children, they drop their children to school and then they go to work. It's a hard life, it's not an easy life, you know. Whereas usually what happens is, that, you know, obviously we don't want to be very general, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, generally speaking, you know, I don't want to be too specific, but generally speaking, Absolutely, yes. generally speaking, you know, men are, like you said, we don't do much. We don't work. do that much uh, work and I think we're all guilty of it. And especially, uh, that's the message you want to give from this program to all the youth. I know they, they don't feel that it's their duty to do such a thing and they feel, oh, we're going to look less manly and, and you know, it's not, it's not a male thing to do. But I think you need to look at the religion and you, you have such a beautiful religion where it's teaching you equality in terms of helping, helping your partner, helping your spouse, helping your wife, you know, and generally helping, you know, even other Muslims. But uh, I think now is the time to get to the quiz of this week and we'll reveal that we'll have the question on, on, this, on the screen very, very shortly. This week's quiz question is, what are the other names of the Qur'an according to, to the Qur'an itself? You have to name three of them at least. Uh, I'll repeat the question again for you. What are the other names of the Qur'an according to the Qur'an itself? Name three. And this week's prize is, you'll have it on the screen very shortly. This week's prize is 25 pound gift voucher. And you can redeem this gift voucher on myshop14.com. Myshop14 has all the religious things. You can get tasbihs, you can search the gods, janamas anything religious that you want and it's very good gift to give to yourself and if you want you can always email us uh, well as uh, as well and if there's any, in, anything in, anything you like you are more than happy to purchase it but try to ring in tell us what you think the answer to the quizzes we'll put your name down and we'll reveal the winner at the end of the show
Mashallah, 25 okay. pounds. Can't go wrong. Is it? Have you been to my show 14.com as yet? No, I haven't been, but no. after this show, we, I'll show you. There's lots of different stuff out there, and you can get so many good things. And if, if there's something like you may want to take it for your for your wife today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? Inshallah, definitely something to uh, something to look forward to. Definitely. Okay, so let's let's come back to to the topic itself, uh, marriage. In today's in today's youth uh, or you know today's uh, society, everybody is busy. You know, everybody is working. You have um, males who are obviously professionals or busy in their life. You have females who are busy in their life and professional. What age do you think is the right age to get married? Well, you know, in terms of age, it, it's a very difficult question um, because each and every human being is different. You know, I can't say, for example, marriage for you at the age of 20 would be good for you. Or I can't say the marriage, you know, marriage for me at the age of 25 would be good for me because I don't know your circumstances and mm -hmm. you don't know my circumstances so it, it's a very it's a very you have to look at someone's circumstances to make a decision like that but generally the the persona of the religious community is the earlier you get married the better for you simply because obviously as we go towards university we know that there's many um, many availabilities Absolutely. many avail availabilities for us that m may cause internal struggle you know struggle with the self and as you know, the Quran says as well, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna nafsa la maratan bisu'i illa ma rahima rabbi. That, you know, surely the soul is inclined towards evil except with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, it's, it becomes more difficult as you become older to control your nafs. So, obviously, rather than trying to control it, you should just allow it to come out mm -hmm. through a halal means, which mm -hmm. is marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us marriage. We should use it. We shouldn't waste it. And you know, extend it until we're 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. and then, you know, once we're too old to have children, we say, you know what, it's time to get married. <laughs> I think that happens in today's society a lot where people try to delay things, uh, you know, even further. They focus on different things like, you know, different obligations they have. Uh, they have like, uh, you know, family obli obligations, they have careers, they have lots of different you know, that, things. That's a, you know, the one of the most uh, funny ones that I, I, oh, I really, you know, I, I really disagree with this. Oh, you know, I, I've, I've got, I've got, I'm studying. Okay. No, I'm sorry, I can't, why can't you get me? I'm studying. Or, you know, oh, I'm too f busy in my career. You know, that one is a classic. I'll tell you why that's a classic. We'll, we'll discuss that in just a moment. We have a live call here. Uh, we'll take the call. We'll enter that person to the quiz if they get the answer. And then we'll come back to what you were just saying. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Assalamu alaikum. I'm speaking from Ireland. What's your name again? Leila. Leila from Ireland. Leila, how are you? Good. So, are you enjoying this week's show? Yeah. Are, are you missing Zain? Are you missing Zayn? Z? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let him know that you know, you're missing him and hopefully he'll be back next week. So Leila, tell me, do you know the answer to the quiz? Um, I think so. Is it Al-Kitab, Al-Zikr and Al-Nur? Okay. Leila, I'll put you, put, you down for the, I'll put you down in the draw and then we'll, we'll reveal the answer at the end and we'll reveal the winner at the end. Thank you so much for your call. I think, right. So. Coming back to, to what you were saying. Yeah, you know, that, that's a classic, you know, simply because, um, you know, when people say, oh, I can't get married for these reasons, it, it's a very weird thing to say. I'll tell you why. You know, they've got time to watch sitcoms. They've got time yeah. to spend time with their friends. They've got time to do everything, but they haven't got time for marriage. But don't you think like when you're, when you're, when you're studying that you don't have the financial means to support mm -hmm. a family or support your partner? I mean... Uh, you sometimes don't even have financial means to support yourself when you when you're studying. Well, that, you that's think? why student finance is there. You know, student finance. That's what it provides. It provides you with that option. You know, for example, there's always people who are dependent on you. So mm -hmm. student finance do give you extra funding mm -hmm. for people who are dependent on you. So Absolutely. I personally don't think that can be used in ex as excuse. Um, another thing is that our parents are more than happy to you know mm -hmm. assist us. You know, if your parents, you our parents in today's age, they're more than happy. Okay. You know. Parents are usually want their children to get married Absolutely. quickly, you know. We'll come back to that. There's another call. Shall we take this call as well? Why not? Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello. Oh. Me. Hello, yes, Asalaamu Alaikum, you live on air. What's your name and where are you calling from? 
we may have some communication difficulties. So, anyways, so parent, you were saying that you have, you know, student yeah, parents, loan. Yeah, parents are parents are more than happy to support, and you know, if if it means making a little bit of struggle, working a part time job, then why not? You know, because end of the day, it's half your religion. Absolutely. If you can't make a sacrifice for half your religion, then what are we going to make a sacrifice for? I I I, I very much agree with with the point you're making because um, I knew a few of my friends when I was at university. They were married. Mm. And they had, they were very secure mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the in terms of the stuff they used to do, and you know they were never, they never used to do anything wrong, and they had, and they were very, in generally you know people used to people can get manipulated very easily when you're at university. So you have all these options, lots of stuff to go to, and uh, lots of different things. But those those friends were very very secure compared to someone uh, some of us who weren't married, and you know. But as I think, getting married young is one of the best things you should do and obviously as you discussed in financially you have student loan that can help you you have family that can help you and i think the biggest help comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well no doubt about it. if you want risk you know the problem is many of us we chase risk we chase risk and we forgot the razik absolutely you know we forgot allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what we need to do you know we need to make sure that we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the one who helps absolutely you know he helped everyone you know we are where we are because mm -hmm. of him today and you know he's got enough power within himself to help us a little bit more if you want to get married inshallah uh, we will take this call and then we'll come back to this assalamu alaikum what's your name and where are you calling from hello hello assalamu alaikum we can hear you assalamu alaikum wa alaikum what's your name and where are you calling from my name is kim Kazmi and i'm from Crawley. Where are you calling from? I'm from Crawley. Did you hear where you're calling from? I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that again? Where are you calling us from, Kinza? I'm from Crawley. Crawley. Crawley, right, okay. Yes. So, Kinza, do you know the answer to the quiz? Al Zikr, mm -hmm. Al Nur, and Al Huda. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Kinza, did you know the answer yourself? Did you ask somebody? We may have dropped the call. Anyways, thank you. Well, I'm glad we have a couple of calls there. Okay, so you mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes, uh, you know, well, he's the, he's the provider. He's the one that gives you risk. And uh, obviously, he opens the doors for you. He opens the doors and he obviously, he's, he has created this person in, in, in a female form from, among, from within you. And uh, that's, that's uh, taking back to Quran, which I read. Um, one of the verses from Quran which is in Surah, uh, Surah 30, verse 21, where he says that, um, and among his signs is this, that he created for you mates from among yourselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this, this verse? Well, taken? definitely, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, he has given us mates from amongst ourselves. Okay. You know, they say, I'll let you finish that just a second. We'll take a call as well. We have lots of views, eager views out there. I think they all want to win the prize. I think they've all checked out the website. I think they've seen something they like and they just want to contribute to it. Pound, isn't it? What can you do? There you go. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Wa alaikum salam. Anis from New York. Assalamu alaikum, Anis. How, yes, Anis, bhai, how are you? How are you, sir? Uh, your question is uh, the answer. Uh, number one, Al Huda. Okay. Number two, Mizan. Furqan. Insan, Noor, Kitab. Wow, mashallah. Thank you so much, Nizbai, for your call. We'll put you down for the quiz. And if you win, you have to take the prize because last time you didn't take it, so you have to take it this time. Okay. Okay? okay. Thank you so much. Do you have a question for Brother Murtaza here? We're discussing a very important topic of marriage and in youth as well. Oh, we may have dropped it, but, anyways, okay. So let's go. Let's go. I'll take another call before we come back to you. Assalamu alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Assalamu alaikum, I'm Mariam from London. Mariam from London. How are you, Mariam? Good. I would like to answer the question. Go on, Mariam, answer the question. Um, the first one is Al Furqan, then Al Qatab, and then Al Zikr, and then I think it's Al Nur and Al Huda. Wow, that's, that's very good, Mariam. Did you know the answer yourself? Did you ask somebody? I searched it. You searched it. Well, that's good. At least now you have knowledge. Thank you so much for your call, Mariam. That's fine. I think, do we have another call or shall we just carry on? 
Okay, what we'll do is we'll, we'll carry, on, carry on with the show. Okay, I want to read another hadith which I, which I, when I was researching for this program, where Imam al Raza has said that the greatest gain for a man is a faithful woman who, when she sees him, becomes happy and protects his property and her own honor in his, uh, in his absence. What do you think about this? Well, this definitely, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's, you know, extracted from the Quran as well, that we are supposed to be a labas for each other, we're supposed to be a clothing for each other within marriage, that's what effectively it is. Um, you know, that's what we have to do, you know. When we see are, there, are there any tests you can pull, you know, do when, you, when, you, when you're looking for a potential spouse, when you're looking for a potential partner? Uh, to all the youths out there, I'm sure they're watching and they want to know, is there, is there any, like for all these, like in terms of to see if the woman is, uh, is, is usually, like you said, your, uh, your protector of your, uh, you know, mm -hmm. respectful and all these things, is there, is there a certain tests you can do, is there certain things you can wear under, how is the best, what's the best thing? I think the best way um, is just to talk to the person, mm -hmm. but you know, H yourself if you want to make an exam up, you know, for yeah. when you get married, make an exam. Make 15 people come to the exam, yeah. make them sit down, and okay. whoever passed the test, they can get married to you. <laughs> but, you know, until, until then, bro, until then. No, but the, all jokes aside, um, yeah. all jokes aside, the best way is to talk to a person. The best way is to get to know the person from herself or himself, or effectively find out from their family members, find out from the people surrounding them, their friends. Um, that's probably the best way to get to know okay. a person. Um, Otherwise, you know, the, I could, there's no, for example, you know, we have a thermometer mm -hmm. for, you know, temperature. We do, there's no yeah, marriage yeah. barometer where I can say, you know, okay. you put this in and, you know, bada bing, bada boom, you get you, the person. You enter there, the right? digits and that's everything yeah, comes everything, out. Yeah, yeah, the perfect woman comes yeah. out, you know, or a perfect guy. It, it doesn't exist. But yeah, th I think you can do the best that you can do. If there's attraction there, there's compatibility, you know, those are some steps. And, you know, like we mentioned, being compromised. Compromise. I think compromise and support yeah. other two. You can't, you know, the thing is, uh, Brother H, you can't get the perfect partner, yeah. but you can make the perfect yeah. partner. Well, that's a very powerful statement. We'll come back to the, I'll take a call first. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm Tama from London. What's your name? Um, I'm Taiba calling from London. Taiba calling from London. No, can Taiba tell me? Do you know the answer to the quiz? Um, yes. Go on. Um, what's the answer? Al Zikr, yes. Al Huda, Um Al Kitab, and Al Nur. Wow, you gave four. We asked for three, but you gave four. That's very good. That means our views are they're very educated. And I think, did you know the answer yourself? Did you research? Um, did you ask people? I asked my mom. You asked your mom. Well, there you go. At least they're learning. Thank you so much for your call. Okay. Right, so the, there you go. You know, such young viewers are calling in and they're asking people, at least that means they're sitting down with the family and they're, and they're discussing things. But we, I'll take another call and we'll come back. Um, Asalaamu Alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Wa Alaikum Asalaam, my name is Ali Abbas Rashid and I'm calling from London. Ali Abbas from London. I think Murtaz, you're from London and we have loads of people calling in from London today. So Ali Abbas, tell me the answer to the quiz. Yeah, I want to answer the question. Go on, answer the question. Um, other words for Quran is Kitab, yes. Nur, Huda, Furqan, Shifa. Wow, you, you answered four as well. That's very good, Ali Abbas. Thank you so much for your call and uh, contributing towards the show. Thank you. We, do we have another call? Okay, that's fine. So, so let's, let's come back to the, to the topic. I think. Uh, I want to go to, uh, I want to read a hadith by Imam Ali and we'll shed some light on this hadith where Imam Ali salam, has said that the, the jihad of a woman is to take care of her husband well. I mean we've talked about what the duties of man and on women are, but what do you think about woman's jihad being her, du you know, a woman's jihad is taking care of her husband, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know, as in jihad comes in two forms, there's the minor, uh, minor jihad and yes. there's the major jihad, yes. you know. And that's a major major jihad, you know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do to look after someone, you know, anyone, you know, generally, but especially your husband. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you know, you'll hear it from women all the time, you know, I'm not saying this for myself, you know, I'm look after two children, one is yeah. a big one, one is a small one, yeah. right? You hear it all the time. You know, it's a very difficult job to do, you know, you have to cook and clean and everything and you do it not because... Because Islam says, because Islam says that that's not something that is wajib upon you that you have to do. You do it out of the love and compassion. You know, I think that's the very that's a very beautiful thing about the opposite gender. You know, they do things out of love and compassion and kindness. 
Whereas the things, you know, men, we don't do that. We're going to be honest, you know, let, let's be honest, you know. We don't help our love and compassion to do cleaning and, mm -hmm. you know, helping with the hoover. You know, just small yeah, things. Small, that, small things within the house. I mean, you understand, yeah. we don't do it, but they, they, they do it. They go to work, they look after the children, they, they iron your clothes, they do everything for you. And they don't have to do it, but they still do it because... Sometimes you're right, I, I'm baffled by the amount of energy, uh, you know, ladies have. Because I see them, they're working and they're coming home, looking after the house, looking after the kids, children, and I, I just don't, I just don't understand how they have so much energy. Because when I come back from work, I am exhausted. I don't think I want to do anything. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm learning a lot more stuff, and hopefully my attitude will change. But let me take another call. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm calling from Manchester. Mehdi, Mehdi Zafar. What's the Mehdi Zafar? Sorry. What's your name, please? My name is Azhar. I'm calling Azhar. from Manchester. Assalamu alaikum Azhar. Tell me the answer. Do you know the answer to the quiz? Uh, well, I can answer the quiz, but I uh, have actually particularly phoned. Uh, well, in terms of your quiz, there is name for Khan, yes. uh, Zikr, al Huda, Nur. Uh, and these are the names, but uh, I would like to talk more on your topic. Please matter. do. Please contribute towards the topic. Well, what do you think? I think as far as this marriage subject is concerned, especially from the Islamic perspective, our community has to learn a lot before marriage and after marriage. Because the choice of a so-called partner, which I call it uh, in a much more respectable manner, the word partner, not in the Western context, because she or he carries a very responsible I understand, role yes, yes. in our Islamic marriage concept. The important thing which you are causing problems now is the methodology or the procedures which are being followed in finding the right person for the for the marriage, and that is causing a considerable uh, sometimes problems and confusions mm -hmm. and so and so. <clears throat> uh, if uh, your guest happens to know some kind of early references in Islamic history, how this marriage. <clears throat> A partner has been chosen in early times. It might throw some, some possibly light because the 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 problem is <clears throat> that if you take the reference to the hadith in which it has been told, you know, when you are looking for a partner, especially for a a woman, what sort of qualities you look for, which we all have read about it and understood. But unfortunately, in the modern time, the things have been changed quite a lot. Our youths don't have a clear concept uh, about a woman's role in marriage and at the time when we choose her, because <clears throat> sometimes things are not is explained clearly. Sometimes you look very superficially about a person's image. <clears throat> sometimes you, you forget about the family's uh, background and you enter into some kind of understanding outside the families and so and so. So there are. These are the real practical problems on which I think we need to concentrate uh, quite um, quite a lot in order to make the life much easier and understandable. Especially, I mean, uh, the way I see it, that if somebody goes and looks in a family for a young lady and he goes, meets the family and so and so, and then he rejects that lady. I mean, how that lady feels about it. You know, these... These are more like psychological factors come into, into play here. So I think it is, it is important that we should concentrate on those aspects and uh, hopefully we'll find some good real solutions for that in which to succeed and make a marriage for life. And after marriage, of course, there are other lessons which have to be learned as well uh, because both are equally responsible and partners. One should not just expect that the woman's role is only just for a few things and the man just sits behind, obviously. Anyway, thanks so much for your uh, time. Thank you so much for your call. Uh, Brother Musa, he's, he's mentioned some very good points. First, first of all, uh, the caller asked, was early references? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then, he, uh, then he said different things about, you know, in modern times, how you can implement it. Uh, we'll come, come back to that. I'll take another call first and then we'll come back. Assalamu alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Ali Madat. Wa alaikum As salam. Wa calling from Leicester. I want to give the answer. The answer is Al Hidayah, Al Bayan, Al Kitab, Al Mubin, Al Hakim. Thank wow. you, Khadafis. Thank you so much.
That's great. Wow, she, she gave so many answers. That's excellent. Okay. Uh, do we have another caller? Uh, no, no problem. So, okay. Well, basically, you know, you, you look at early times, um, there's many examples of Mir al muminin when he chose the mother of Abu yeah. al Um al banin um, That's one of the main examples that I could give from the top of my head at the moment. It's very simple. Okay. Amir al-Mu'minin went to an uh, intermediate person, aka his brother, yes. find me, this is the sort of woman I'm looking mm -hmm. for. He recommended, he went and proposed, they got married. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's generally how it works in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like Uncle said as well, you know, in today's community it's slightly different. That happens, that process, but then the two individuals want to get to know each other mm -hmm. a bit more. Um, whether that's something we should agree with or we shouldn't agree with, that's down to the marja, mm -hmm. that's down to, for example, the people of that community, mm -hmm. the respected scholars, that's down to their discretion, not mine, and that's also the decision of the two families, once again, you know, so that's down to their opinions and, mm -hmm. you know, what they feel. Like Uncle said, you know, we need, we need more, we need to have more research. Mm -hmm. For example, before marriage, we need to read things like Rasalat al mm -hmm. that tells you the rights of the husband, that tells you the rights of the wife, Absolutely. and then obviously, we need to learn from the lessons of people who have already been married, mm -hmm. like Fatima al Zahra and Amir al Mu'min, these individuals. Mm -hmm. We need to learn from their marriages. We need to learn about the patience of Fatima al Zahra, and we need to look at how she lived her life and how she lived in retrospect to her children, to her father, and indeed to her husband. Mm -hmm. And until we don't do that, you know, it's all like, like Uncle said, it's all superficial, isn't it? Because until we don't. Because many of us, we have information. We know what happened, we know the stories, but we don't have knowledge. So what's the difference between information and knowledge? Information is just harboring that information, mm -hmm. having it, and not using it. That piece of paper has information on it. See, when you apply that information, then it becomes knowledge. Absolutely. Because there's an application now. Mm -hmm. It's like I'll give you an example of a computer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got information, it's got data, data yeah. on there. But until it's not used, it's just data. Exactly. It's useless. Unless you put it into practical terms until you do something, then it becomes more important. That's when you implement in your life and that's how different, how th that's what marriage is. I mean, you know, look at all the information and look at all the different things and then you try to implement. Well, we have a, we'll take the very last call for this show and then we'll continue talking okay. further. Asalaamu As Alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Asalaamu Alaikum, Yali Madat. My name is Waji and I'm calling from Luton. And the answer to the question is, Al Furqan, Al Kitab, and Al Nur. Well, thank you, Thank, you, thank you so much for your call, Khadafis. Okay, wow. Such eager callers and such young callers as well. They have so much knowledge. I know that's amazing. Okay, sorry. Coming back, coming back to what coming back to what you were saying, um, and obviously different different things that a viewer has said. Uh, to understand the knowledge and try to impl well, understand the information and try to implement in your life. And what's, what's, and what's the best advice you think youth can follow in today's society, in today's term? I mean, the time has changed. When our parents got married, uh, or you know, when our grandparents got married, it was different. You know, it, they didn't have the choices we had. They didn't ha the time was different. And they were more or less, you know, to put it bluntly, they were more or less stuck with what they have got. In today's youth, I mean, like the caller said before, like when you see somebody, and then you reject that person. Obviously, it has you psychological know, effect. Exactly. I mean, what what what's the best way of countering that sort of thing? What's the best way of doing that? Is should somebody just uh, see their CV? Should somebody just see their resume? I mean, what's the best things one can do? What's the use? Well, you can know, do? There, there's certain aspects of marriage that you can't get away from. You know, especially the, the ethos of the way we're getting married nowadays. That's how it usually happens. That two families get together, and then you know, the daughter and the son of each respective family see each other and then they make a decision afterwards and then they inform the other family. You know, those are certain things you can't get away from. Um, some of the solutions is probably arranged marriage, mm -hmm. completely arranged, where for example the person knows that, you know, for example looking at pictures, mm -hmm. we've all had our, you know, we've had that, we've had that experience where you have to look at pictures um, and then make that judgment call. That you know, this is someone I would be attracted to, mm -hmm. and then obviously see where it leads on from there. You know, other things is you know within family. You know, sometimes people are a bit you know laid back about that, but you know sometimes you have family friends that you know about that you maybe grown up with. Mm -hmm. you know, that's another way to counter that issue. But you know, countering that issue in its essence is very difficult. Yeah, there is psychological effects, but you know some things you just can't get away from in in mm -hmm. today's society. You know, we're not living in a society where 
you know, people don't know one another. You know, everyone knows each other. Mm -hmm. So they're always going to be face-to-face -face contact. There's always going to be instances where people want to get to know you before they want to mm -hmm. have a marriage. So like I said, you know, it, it's very, it's, it depends on circumstances. I, you know, you can't give an answer like that because there's, you have to look at the, so many factors before giving an answer like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to look at the families. Mm -hmm. Are they religious or aren't they religious? You know, you have to look at what's the environment of those two. How old are they? You know, what are they? What is the way that they think? You know, you have to look at all these different aspects before you can come to a, a decision like that and say, what is the solution to this problem? Because it's mm -hmm. an ongoing problem. It's not just something that just you know came out of poof, came out of air. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's something that's ongoing. Okay, that's that's you've you've said some very good points there. And there's what there's a question that's always been on my mind. A lot of friends have have asked this question. I mean, the thing is that in today's society and you know in Western society. Uh, women or females are because they're educated, they're professionals, and they're working. Uh, do you feel that they sh they should stop working and you know concentrate more towards family? Do you feel they should carry on working? What do you feel uh, for today's youth? The best advice is if they have somebody who is educated, who has talents, and who is able to work and able to provide and able to help the husband out. What do you think in terms of that? What's well, you know. In society today, there are different avenues. For example, there's maternal leave, mm -hmm. there's paternal leave, paternal leave, where yeah, a guy, c you know, a man can leave. And you have the more in Western side than in in our Muslim society. There you go. So you know, it's not. I don't think it's it's a it's it's a very good excuse to make. You know, oh, should I make a sacrifice? Hey, you know, the the world is saying to you, look, maternally you can leave, mm -hmm. paternally you can leave, go with your family, spend some time with them. And generally, you know, whenever you can spend time with your family, you know, if you like I said, you know, the most important thing in your life is your family. Mm -hmm. Work comes and goes. Money comes and goes. Friends come and go. People in your life come and go. You know, no one's staying there forever. Absolutely. But the people that are going to stay in your life, if you play your cards right, yeah. is going to be your family. family. It's so going to be your mum and dad. It's going to be your wife. It's going to be your children. Yeah. So, you know, imagine, you know, you don't spend enough time with your family and your family leaves you. Yeah. Ask, you know, you know what? You never, ha you never understand what you have until it leaves until you. Until it leaves you, I agree. You know, when you, when your wife and your children are not there, and you want to see them badly, and you mm -hmm. can't see them anymore, then that's when you realize what you've lost, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. People are not willing to make the sacrifice at the beginning. Then later on in their life, and they're thinking to themselves, you know, I should have made that sacrifice. That's true. I and I, I would like to say this, you know, that this point is very important. That obviously, it all falls under the umbrella of love and obviously under the umbrella of affection towards your family and treating them well and that goes b back to the point that we mentioned at the beginning that you help your partner, you help your wife, you help your family members and I know the message I would like to, and I'm talking to myself first before I talk to anybody out there that the first thing I would do or you know youth should do is compromise mm -hmm. and always support the other person and you know if you if if you see that other, your partner or your wife is tired or you know if you feel that they're they're not able to do a task then go and help out I mean I understand that it's, for some people it's very awkward and they feel that they feel very, you know less manly but I think it's yeah. more of a manly thing than to help your spouse to help your partner help your family in day-to-day -day chores and day-to-day -day activities and I think that's one of the one of the most important points that you can take from today is compromise, supporting, and obviously loving and affecting each other. Is there is there any more examples like you know when Prophet got married? What are the main qualities that he looked for? Say the Khadija. What were the main things that he looked for in in his marriage? Well, in terms of the Prophet, you, we already realized that there was already a relationship already there between mm -hmm. the Prophet and Bibi Khadija alayhi salam through business. Mm -hmm. So they already realized certain traits about because obviously when you go into business with someone you begin to realize you know what they like and who they are and how they are and what are their habits what are they not habits mm -hmm. what do they like what are their dislikes that's what happens usually when you go into business anyway so you know so you could argue that there was a relationship before the marriage relationship mm -hmm. which was obviously a professional relationship, professional relationship but regardless yeah. of it being a professional relationship you do learn certain things mm -hmm. because as you are probably aware yourself mm -hmm. sometimes the best of friends are formed in a business relationship. Yeah, absolutely. You know, That's when you get to see somebody, you get to see their qualities, yeah. you get to see their traits, yeah. and you're putting them through, you know, we did a program on wealth before, and we understand when you, when you want to test somebody, you, you, know, you borrow some money from them, and then you realize their true qualities. Yeah. But generally, you, you look at the life of Bibi Khadija, alayhi salam, you know, she was a truthful person, she was a loving person, a kind person. You know, look at how many orphans she helped within her mm -hmm. life. You know, the, these are the most important traits. You mm -hmm. know, like I said, it's all about personality. If a person's got a good personality, a good persona about them, mm -hmm. 
then they will be good. You know, many people think that, oh, you know, she has to be this, she has to be that. But if they got a good personality, they will become mm -hmm. eventually. You know, just because they're not perfect at the moment, they're not, for example, the most religious person, it doesn't mean that they won't become. And that's what a marriage is. It's a journey. It's a journey where both of you develop yourself spiritually. That's what marriage is. Marriage is not, for example, I'm already the richest person, so I'm going to marry another rich person. Or, you know, he's the most religious person, I'm going to marry the most religious person. It's hard to find people like that. Marriage is that means to go towards that religious completion, to go towards that material completion. That's what marriage is. Excellent. I think what you mentioned there is absolutely amazing. That it's, it's a spiritual journey. It's not just you know yourself. You're taking somebody else, your friend, your partner who's who's with you for life, and you're growing together. It's, it's a bond that's growing from you know till you get married till 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 the end. Okay, viewers, thank you so much for contributing towards the show, and I just like to thank Sayyid Murtaza for coming in and you know being a special guest. And I'm sure you you know you will invite you again for in our future programs. And before we let you go, we're gonna do the uh, quiz draw. And before we do the draw, I like to answer the quiz question. The question we asked you today was, uh, what are the other names of Quran according to the Quran itself? There's loads of answers. There's, there's lots of stuff that Quran has used itself in the Quran. There's Kitab, there's Kalam, there's Noor, Huda, Rahma, Furqan, Shifa, Zikr, Kareem, Hikmah, Hakim, Wadim, Habil. And majority of the people who rang in, there's even further, the list goes on and on and on. There's loads of answers, and the majority of the people who called, they said the correct answer. So we'll do the draw, and I'm going to ask you to do the honors. Normally, we have some drum rolls, and that's just Zen doing, you know, doing it on the desk. And I'll do it this time, and then you can just shake it yeah, and, sure. and just reveal the answer. So should we do the drum rolls? Yeah, please. But before we do the drum roll, I just want to apologize to anyone. If I don't pick out your name, I still love you all. <laughs> okay. I apologize. For that's that. good. So ready? One, two. There we go. That's it. No, you have to read it. I'll, I'll hold this. You tell me who the, uh, who the winner is for this week's quiz. What if I can't read your handwriting? Okay, then I'll have to read <laughs> it. <laughs> um, Kinza from Crowley. Wow. This week's winner is Kinza from Crowley. Uh, Kinza, can you just email? Um, the email address is underneath. You can see on the, on the screen here. And if you can just email us your details and we'll send you the voucher. You can redeem that voucher on myshop14.com. Uh, the winner for this week's quiz is Kenza from Crawley. And I'd just like to uh, again say thank you so much, Sayyid, for coming in. And uh, if you can just, would you mind reading Dwight Farage for us as well? No, it's totally fine. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. before, I, before I read, yes. thank you for having me. No problem. Uh, thank, you for, thank you to the Hadai team for you know, doing such a great job. And Inshallah, here we go. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai. Fi hadhi sa'a. Wa fi kulli sa'a. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again on Hidayat TV every Sunday eight o'clock on the H and Z show. Thank you very much, Khuda.